Now, anytime you get near databases, you're going to hear about transactions and transaction logs. So let's answer the question here. What exactly is a transaction? And this will fit in with what is a transaction log and how do we use the thing? So first off, simple definition, a transaction simply comes down to any set of multiple actions that must either all complete successfully or all fail. In other words, let's say we've got three different actions that are taking place. We want all three actions to be successful and to go into the database, or if two of them are successful and one's not successful, we don't want any of these actions to go into the database. It's all or nothing. There's a classic example of this, and let's take a look at it. You go online to your bank and you want to withdraw some money from savings and then you want to deposit it into your checking account. Okay, You want to do it all over the internet. Well, think about what's going on here. If you withdraw from savings and then can't deposit into your checking account, what do you want to have to that happen to that money that you just withdrew from savings? You want it to go back into your savings account automatically, right? You want this thing to fail and nothing to happen. Well, let's go the other way. What if the withdrawal from savings doesn't work? So you try to draw, withdraw $1,000 from savings, but that fails, but then it lets you deposit $1,000 into checking. Well, you know, you and I would be spending all night online on the bank's uh, website depositing money into our checking account, right? Because the bank wants this withdrawal. If the withdrawal is successful, they want the deposit to be successful. If the deposit is successful, they want the withdrawal to be successful. Same thing for us. We both have a stake in this. So we want both of these to be successful, or we want neither of these to be successful. That's a transaction. Now, this adds a lot of power to, again, the advantage of using a transaction log. Let's go back to our little diagram. I've got a database out here. And let's just picture over here you have updates that are coming in to the transaction log. And notice in the transaction log, I may have multiple transactions happening concurrently. I've got two different users taking actions, and they're each opening separate transactions. And I've signified this here in the diagram with a red update and a blue update. These come into the transaction log. And so another blue transaction comes in, another red one, another red one, another blue one. Now, what we want to do is... The transaction log not only keeps everything sequentially that happens to the database to save a load uh, on the database and disk time on the database, but it also organizes these transactions. And it's actually looking for a notation here that says this is the beginning of a red transaction, and maybe this is the conclusion of a red transaction. This is the beginning of a blue transaction, and this is the conclusion of a blue transaction. So once the transaction log sees that it has a beginning of a transaction and a conclusion or a committal of a transaction, then what it's going to do is write those completed transactions into the database. So the transaction log is, in reality, doing a couple of things for us. Number one, it's storing all of our changes more or less in a linear fashion, taking a little bit of a load off the database server because we don't have to spin the disk to find just the right location for the disk constantly for the data, but it also organizes our transactions. And again, a transaction is anything that we want to have happen either altogether or not at all. Now, there's something else the transaction log can do for us. Let's say that another transaction gets written in. Say it's the green transaction here. And this is the start of it, and this is the second part, but the third part fails, and nothing ever happens with it. What do we want to have happen? Well, we want those transactions, if they never completed, to just disappear. So we can simply roll those transactions back out of the transaction lock. Now, one thing you will need to know and understand is that for the time these transactions are in the log, that when I run a select against the database, it actually looks in the database itself for data, and it looks in the transaction log. It combines those together and sends the result set back to me. So anytime I do a select statement, I really am looking in two or three different places. There's actually more places. There's a RAM location and memory where it's looking. But the bottom line is, is until that transaction log has been purged, or until something happens to cause that data to be wiped out of the transaction log, it will still show up. But at some point, it does disappear, and it's as if it was never in the database. And in actuality, it never was. It was only in the transaction log. So that's the power of the transaction log. Now, in the next couple of three videos, we're going to talk about how do we kick transactions off? How do we 
give SQL Server hints that we want certain things to be part of transactions. And I'll show you an example of that with Transact SQL Code in the next video.